Welcome to episode 2 of Environmental Management Lecture Series, a video lecture series on the subject Environmental Management. I am Ronald Alan Pakana, your subject instructor. Today, we will discuss environmental management and public administration. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as we go through our learning journey. For our topic outline, we will begin with environmental management as one of the domains of public administration. And then we'll proceed with the evolution of environmental actions across time. And lastly, we'll dive in with environmental management in the Philippines. Environmental management is deemed to be one of the domains of public administration. Public administrators have been very concerned about how policy affects environmental issues from air quality to sea level as well as sustainability of food sources. Public administrators also have made initiatives to preserve the environment such as implementing solid waste management up to the lowest levels of government, limiting wildlife catches, regulate extractive industries such as mining, lumber, coal plants, and others. This is to ensure that resources are available not only in the present but for future generations as well. We now dive into the evolution of environmental actions across time. It all started in 1949 in New York, USA. The UN Scientific Conference on the Conservation and Utilization of Resources was the first UN body to address the depletion of those resources and their use. The focus, however, was mainly on how to manage them for economic and social development and not from a conservation perspective. The Economic and Social Council in 1968 was the first to include those issues in its agenda as a specific item and decided and then later endorsed by the General Assembly to hold the first United Nations Conference on the Human Environment. The first Earth Summit in Stockholm, Sweden in 1972 was a key milestone. A declaration raised the issue of climate change for the first time, warning governments to be mindful of activities that would lead to climate change and evaluate the likelihood and magnitude of climatic effects. The first of the Conference of Parties or COP was held in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil in 1992. A clear-cut distinction emerged between industrialized countries responsible for most emissions over the years and developing countries which suffer from the worst consequences of global warming. It was on this conference that the industrialized countries have been notified to monitor their emissions. The next key milestone was in 1997 the Conference of Parties 3 in Kyoto, Japan. The convention adopted the Kyoto Protocol. For the first time, an obligation to reduce atmospheric carbon emissions was imposed on the richest nations. Fast forward to 2007, during the Conference of Parties 13 in Bali, Indonesia, an action plan was developed with the aim of reaching a global agreement. Its scope would have included increased requirements for the richer countries to cut their carbon emissions and their extension to emerging economies such as China, India, and Brazil. However, in 2009, during the Conference of Parties 15 in Copenhagen, Denmark, the conference outcome was terrible, almost tragic. Mere political agreement was reached with no binding obligations and no concrete goals. Conference of Parties 21 in Paris, France changed the landscape. The result of the conference was a landmark global agreement to combat climate change, also known as the Paris Agreement. 196 countries, almost the entire international community, decided to commit to keeping the increase in average global temperatures well below 2 degrees centigrade. Sadly, 2019, 25 and in Madrid, Spain is a mess. 
regionally should be held in Santiago, Chile, and canceled with the protests storming the nation. Though the conference pushed through, a certain void was left due to some new leaders in their stance against environmental issues. Most notably, the United States, led by President Donald Trump. As the world action against environmental management hangs in the balance, a conference of parties 26 to be held in Glasgow, Scotland, this October to November 2021, is a very important event. This will be a crucial conference as matters concerning the environment were not properly addressed in the prior conferences and due to the challenges brought by the COVID-19 pandemic. The conferences at different times brought important milestones and set the stage for promoting environmental management, providing the world community to craft environmental framework and promote sustainability. We now turn to the environmental management in the Philippines. country is geographically located along the Pacific Ring of Fire, faces the Pacific Ocean. Due to this, natural disasters such as volcanic eruption, earthquake, and typhoons are a common occurrence. Along with that, the country faces a plethora of environmental problems. The main four ones are forestation, legal fishing, air pollution, and water pollution. Let's begin with deforestation. Over the course of the 20th century, forest cover of the Philippines dropped from 70% down to 20%. In total, 46 species are in danger and 4 have been eradicated completely. Only 3.2% of the total rainforest is left. This intensifies flood damage in certain areas. Next is illegal fishing. In 2018, 927,617 people were officially reported as being involved in capture fishing, and fish contributes to 50% of the Filipino's protein consumption. This fish reliance has contributed to the current overfishing of 70% of Philippine fishing grounds and about 40% of fish caught being done illegally. Air pollution Due to industrial waste from automobiles, Manila suffers from air pollution, affecting 98% of the population. Annually, air pollution causes more than 4,000 tons. Water pollution A glut claim to have a coherent environmental policy has led to the contamination of 58% groundwater in the Philippines. According to the Asian Development Bank, the Pasig River is one of the world's most polluted rivers running through the capital city of Manila, though it has been rehabilitated recently. Here are some of the government actions made by the government of the Philippines. Republic Act 9003 for the Solid Waste Management Act an act providing for an ecological solid waste management program, creating the necessary institutional mechanisms and incentives, declaring certain acts prohibited, and providing penalties, appropriating funds, therefore, and for other purposes. Sustainable development initiatives. This includes conservation of biodiversity, rehabilitation of ecosystems, control of population growth and human resources development, Inducing growth in rural areas, promotion of environmental education, strengthening citizens' participation, and promoting small to medium sized enterprises and sustainable agricultural and forestry practices. Department of Environment and Natural Resources Environmental Management Bureau Monitoring. The office is responsible for environmental impact assessments, pollution prevention and control, as well as Forcing six main environmental laws in the Philippines. Writ of Talikasan, a legal remedy under Philippine law that provides protection of one's constitutional right to a healthy environment. It highlights that state shall protect and advance 
the right of the people to a balanced and healthy ecology in accord with the rhythm and harmony of nature. For your activity number two, you are to make a reflective essay on the following. First, importance of environmental management in public administration. Second, importance of international environmental conferences with the Philippines Environmental Management Actions. And third, assess the environmental management actions of the country. Submit your answers to our Google Classroom. The deadline for this will be on or before October 11, 2021. Should you have any questions, you can contact me through the following outputs. This has been Ronald Island Pakana, and this is Environmental Management Lecture Series.